question for you guys so directly right in front of me there is there's four, four or five blue tanks does anyone what does anyone know what's happening uh as we speak right now in front of us so there's four tanks they they look like big water storage things and they're kind of just leaning out next to a pump does anyone want to take a wild guess what's happening they're currently fracking that that well so that well is, is being hydraulically fractured what it is, what those blue containers are, is they hold water, they hold chemicals, and they hold solutions that the oil industry uses to simulate the underground wells, to break up the, the, the rocks and all the uh, sediments, to extract all the oil and gases trapped in, in pockets of uh, 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 rock and uh, formations of water underneath. Um, so as you take a panoramic view from the east to the west, like I said, the majority of this is owned by Chevron and operated by independent contractors that Chevron operates under. Uh, the Kern River runs from the Sierra Nevadas down here. By the time it diverts down here, the majority has already been intaken to use 
uh, for, for well simulations. Um, there's a lot of conventional oil drilling that happens here, but the majority of operations that happen are uh, extreme methods of extraction. So hydraulic fracturing, uh, steam injection, water flooding. What it is, you know, in the middle of a drought, you hear about water flooding, they're doing that actively right now. They'll flood the bottom of an uh, uh, old well and, you know, kind of bring up all the old crude that's in the bottom and then just recycle that water to be sold for farmland and X, Y, and Z. Um, so we'll be driving down there. Uh, as, you, as you kind of drove into town, you see, like, all around us, there's very nice homes. There's, you know, it's an affluent community. A lot of these homes run for $500,000 or more. Bakersfield College is down the street here. Um, so, you know, this is a very part, nice part of, the, uh, of Bakersfield, right? And this is obviously upwind from all these practices. As we drive through this and we go downwind, there's a city of oil down there, where the majority of the people that live there are, you know, there, there's a lot of problems that exist in that community. There's the highest concentration of drug use, the highest concentration of uh, school dropouts, uh, of, you know, homeless people, incarcerated. Uh, incarcerated, and a lot of these people are mostly white people. And the worst part of, of Bakersfield, you know, include lower class colored people, for the exception of the city of oil down, right? And it's directly, it's the city that you see down there, it's directly downwind from these practices, right? So not only are Latino brothers and sisters and our, our, our African American brothers and sisters dealing with this, but everyone's dealing with this, right? It's, it's, yes, it, it, environmental justice deals with, you know, marginalized colored communities, but it does, it's not exclusive to them, right? It's, it's, it encompasses everyone. Yeah, I mean, it's protecting his head, which is important, but... From? What's well, he gonna protect? Like, <laughs> So I mean, you can see what kind of what kind of schematics the, the oil is. algae bloom. Like, oh, it's nothing. Don't worry, it's algae bloom. Like, it's not algae bloom. One, they don't test for it. Two, they they do very poor efforts to. Now that I think about it, we used to put so much chemicals into the fruit trees that there was times where we had like an airplane spray it and nobody could go into the field for yeah. like three days. And then we sold it to Home Depot and then Home Depot sold it to somebody's house mm -hmm. and then the, those persons probably ate the fruit off of it. Right, right. So I don't know what are the implications long term right. of that. And then as, <laughs> as you think about that, like ponder that in this school, a lot of children like it's nothing but children that attend here, right? That play recess and, and after school programs on the outside. And as these, as as you think about, man, as a child, I probably had a, a secondary effect to this thing. There's almond orchards across the street and to every side of it that are being sprayed on a weekly basis. Yeah. There is uh, oil and gas They had production. a battle between, I remember when my little brother came to this school, they had a battle because they wanted to kick that oil. Yeah, oil out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I don't know who won. Yeah, well, I think they want to Right now, once, once we take this little walk, we're gonna drive up here. Uh, there, there's a there's a facility there that has a flare, and in the in the in the van where we're at, we we talked about this, but I'm not sure if it was it was shared in the Fresno van. But the the question was, is there is this all the, everything that's being dug up? Is it part of the Monterey shell? Yes, it's it's part of the Monterey shell. And one of the questions was, do they produce natural gas? And so when you think about fracking, the, the terminology of hydraulic fracturing, you know, it's, it's synopsis to the East Coast and, and drilling there and hydraulic fracturing for natural gas. Here in, in, in Central California, all the, nat the majority of the natural gas that is consumed and, and captured by these oil industries is simply burnt off because it is not profitable enough to store, maintain, and sell. And so instead of collecting it uh, for periods of time and then selling it, they just simply burn it off. Uh, there's a historic battle that we've, us environmental justice collaborators and uh, communities, fought big and hard with, with, with an oil operator here, where there was a flare that was continuous for months at a time, 15 feet up in the, in the sky, that sounded like a jet engine just roaring day in and day out. 
And as that was going on, imagine the level of pollutants that these children playing, you know, tag were, were consuming while the fields were being sprayed with Roundup, Monsanto, and, and, and pesticides, you know? And you think about what kind of kids live here, man. You know, the majority of the kids here are, are colored kids. The majority of the kids that live here are probably from within generations migrant farm working parents, you know? And you don't see this kind of thing in Calabasas. You don't see this kind of thing in uh, Monterey County. You know, you don't see this, these, these activities, right? And so it's part of this bigger systemic issue that needs to be dealt with, right? Where, where toxic locations and manufacturers are placed versus what kind of communities live next to those manufacturers and those sites, right? And as you can see around us, you know, there's a lot of ag and a lot of oil that come here, right? And a large, of our, a large part of our populations that live next to these sites are colored people, are people that are most likely uneducated with higher education, are probably most likely marginalized. Uh, the quality of life they're living is a lot less than people that live in, you know, upper inner cities. Uh, so, I mean, everything is, 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 you know, has a cause and effect that might be direct or indirectly caused by, by these activities. Hi, it's me again.